Welcome to News West 9's West Texas View with Johnny Lou Avery. Welcome to the West Texas View. I'm Johnny Lou Avery and several uh, months ago we started a series of programs with some of the doctors at the Texas Tech University Health Science Center and uh, Dr. Melinda Morris uh, who is board certified in a uh, obstetrics and gynecology and also clinical nutrition has been uh, here for several of the different uh, programs but she came back today because we've had such a an abundance of questions for her that she just had to come back and uh, and uh, answer them but before we get started on that Dr. Morris I want you to talk a little bit about something that we started to talk about last week when you were talking about preventive medicine and weight control and some of the other things that you try to teach your patients as you're uh, taking care of immediate problems. And one of the things we didn't get to touch on was vitamins. And mm -hmm. I know this has been an area of research for you, an area that you've been very interested in because you think the, the more you prevent medicine with the proper nutrition and the proper um, nutrients, uh, the better you are. So talk a little bit about vitamins. Well, I'm always asked, are vitamins important? And I say, well, vitamins are essential. So yes, they're important. And you know, they say, well, do I really need to take these vitamin supplements? And I say, yes. Um, you know, our nutrition is not what it used to be. Uh, we used to be able to get adequate vitamins and minerals in the foods that we ate. Um, but a lot of the processed foods just lack mm -hmm. the nutrition. Uh, the vitamin and minerals are not there. Mm -hmm. So I recommend you know, a daily multivitamin for, for the younger patients in the age 20 to 30 range, but by the time you're age 40, you've probably got many mineral and vitamin deficiencies. Mm -hmm. And there are actually symptoms associated and diseases associated with vitamin and mineral deficiencies. And so when ladies come in for just their annual exam, that sort of thing, I talk about you know just, just your basic vitamins that you should be taking on a regular basis. Mm -hmm. uh, and you know, they'll say, well, should I take natural versus synthetic, that sort of thing. I tend to recommend the more natural vitamins, the mm -hmm. more organic, or they'll even say live vitamins. Um, because these are more food-based and it's more natural for your body to absorb. To that. Yeah. Yeah, make the use of it. The problem with some of the, um, the vitamins is the fillers that they include uh, with the vitamins. And in some cases you may be absorbing maybe only 10 to 20 percent of the, of the vitamin that you're taking because of the fillers that are present. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And for some ladies, even a liquid vitamin is absorbed better than a, than a pill. Mm -hmm. They've actually done x-rays and shown like calcium pills just sitting in the intestines that were never Digest dissolved or, uh -huh. or reabsorbed. Uh -huh. And uh, the calcium tablets especially for some ladies are very difficult to absorb. Uh -huh. And so we talk about different um, you know, supplement types and that sort of thing that, that they can take. Uh -huh. um, but I think it's very important. Vitamins and minerals are the spark plugs of your cells. Um, when we were going through medical school and taking biochemistry, and I even talked to medical students about this, I said the most important course you're learning is biochemistry, and they kind of forget about that. But the vitamins and minerals actually run all the little energy processes in the cells. They're, they're part of the process. Mm -hmm. So I tell them it's like running your car without spark plugs. If you're missing any of the vitamins or minerals, you're just not going to run as well and a lot of the symptoms of vitamin and mineral deficiencies are fatigue mm -hmm. um, because your cells just aren't able to produce the energy uh, that they could normally under ideal mm -hmm. circumstances. It's almost like recharging. Yes. And, and I mean, not only does it start the car, but your batteries have to be recharged. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it, it's essential. Uh -huh. you're, you know, just like your body, you know, your car won't run without gas, mm -hmm. your body won't run without, you know, essential Well, and a perfect and example of that is the calcium and how women get osteoporosis and, and easily broken bones because they don't have enough calcium in their bones. And well, and that, that was one of my primary areas of interest was looking at vitamin D uh, because vitamin D is so important when women's health. Uh -huh. I mean, there's been studies that have associated vitamin D deficiency with an increased risk in breast cancer. 
And so I started actually routinely screening vitamin D levels on women and um, documenting if they had deficiencies or not and then recommending supplementation so that they could maintain mm -hmm. normal vitamin D levels. And what I was amazed at when I started doing with this was how deficient women were in vitamin D. Mm -hmm. um, you know, vitamin D, you know, we, we assume if we're out in the sunshine, we're gonna make enough vitamin D, but unfortunately, we're not even out in the sunshine right. as much anymore right. as we used to be. And if we are, we've got a sunscreen on, mm -hmm. which blocks your production of vitamin D. Mm -hmm. Plus, as you age, you lose the ability to produce that vitamin D. So I was amazed how deficient women were. And we're even talking deficiency levels equivalent to rickets. And they have actually seen some recurrence of, of rickets um, mm -hmm. coming because of the mm -hmm. severe vitamin deficiencies. But now, isn't, isn't vitamin D what helps you absorb calcium? That's right. So without, so without adequate vitamin D level, you can't absorb the, the calcium that you're taking in in your mm -hmm. diet. Mm -hmm. um, it's a very interesting process. Vitamin D is actually a hormone. And, and it's, it's amazing how many different parts of your body are affected from vitamin D. It's involved in um, some of the neurochemicals in your brain. It's involved in insulin regulation. So there's actually an increased uh, risk of diabetes with mm -hmm. vitamin D deficiency. There's the increased risk for breast cancer. There's increased risk for other cancers. Mm -hmm. It's involved in um, the immuno immunology of your body, your body's ability to fight disease. Mm -hmm. So it impacts your immune system and actually one of the reasons that you may get sick in the winter time is because your vitamin uh -huh. D levels are low because you're you're not out in the sunshine, uh -huh. uh, and you know and there's less sunshine available uh -huh. in the winter time. And of course, you've been doing a lot of this research on women, but we're talking about men too. Oh yes, how important it is for men. But one of the th things that that is almost contradictory is on one hand we read these articles do not get out in the sun it's going to cause skin cancer well that's from the ultraviolet rays it's not from the good part that you get from the sun and so that doesn't you know the bible says all things in moderation well you should be in the sun enough to get vitamin c but we don't we've gotten to the point now like you said where we if we do we're we're going to be really really sure that we have lots of sunscreen on and, and you don't get it from a tanning machine. Well, um, you do get the ultraviolet light. But and, you don't and get the, the... Yeah, the ultraviolet rays are what's stimulating the cells in your skin to produce the vitamin okay. D. Okay, all right. Um, but I can't recommend a tanning bed as your source of vitamin D production. <laughs> I can't either, oh goodness. But I want I want us to talk about taking too much vitamins and uh, okay. how, not, how to know exactly what we need. Okay. We're gonna have to take a break. We'll be back in just a minute and continue this conversation. Stay tuned. West Texas View will be right back. <laughs> 